I'm Cody, and in today's Cyber Weapons Lab, we're going to learn about phishing and the ways you can protect your account from being compromised. Phishing is particularly insidious because the way most people authenticate into their account is to use a single password. Now, we don't necessarily do that with everything that's important nowadays. Usually we use something called multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication in order to make sure that we lock down more important accounts in our life, like the bank account you use, for example. So in order to use your bank account, you generally have a debit card that needs a PIN in order to be used at an ATM. This is an example of something that you have, your debit card, something that you know, your PIN, and in some cases, you can even require something like a fingerprint or a facial scan to open an Android device. That would be an example of a third factor, which is something you are. So these three factors make up the various ways you can prevent just losing a single password from totally granting access to any device that wants to get into your account. So generally, if you're looking to implement something like this, you need to be aware that it's a big switch from just requiring one way of accessing your account. You can't just reset your password and get in because that's kind of the point. That's a big vulnerability. So in order to set that up, your best option for real account security is not going to be something like an SMS message or the two-factor authentication you might already be familiar with. Google's Advanced Account Protection Program only uses these, which are hardware-based universal two-factor authentication security keys. So these security keys are a little bit more advanced than just using two-factor authentication on your phone. You can't just misplace these and still get into your account, especially if you were to lose your laptop or have your phone stolen or destroyed. This is something that you're going to need in order to add a new account, uh, add a new device to your account, no matter who you are, uh, unless you want to go through a whole bunch of pain. You can kind of think of it like locking your keys near your car. It's not something where it's just a simple method of getting these back. You're going to need to go through Google, it's going to take a couple days, and you're really going to have to go through the ringer in terms of actually proving who you are, who you say you are. So in that case, you need to be aware that you can't just use these security keys without doing a little bit of understanding and sometimes even configuration to your machine. So if you were to plug this into an OS X computer like this one here, if you press the wrong button and went with the default settings, it would register as a Japanese keyboard and you would just type Japanese characters every time you try to input a password, which would not really be something that would be helpful. So if you have an iOS device, you actually can't use these because the nifty NFC on the inside that allows you to interface with an Android device doesn't work on the way that Apple implements uh, NFC on an iPhone. So you would need to use something like this Fetian uh, USB Oh, sorry, it actually does support USB, but it's a Bluetooth um, authentication token. So using something like this, you can add any iOS device you want or even you know an Android or something else, but these take a little bit of work to set up and they can be maybe not so straightforward. So make sure you practice and you can use these to add new devices to whatever account you want to connect to because it can be very, very frustrating if you have a, one of these and you can't get in. So we're going to make sure that you know how to set this up on Windows, Debian, Arch, Mac OS X, iOS, and Android to make sure that everyone has a really well-rounded understanding of how to use this on any sort of device you might want to use. And be aware, it does require you to download some libraries. So if you're on Debian or Arch in particular, that is if you're using Kali Linux and you want to authenticate, you will need to make sure that this works because if you're using something like Pia or another VPN, you will constantly appear to be a new device to these accounts and you will constantly be needing to sign in with this. So that's kind of the trade-off of being anonymous. It ends up making it so that you look like you know potentially a new device that's trying to sign in. So you need to be aware of uh, the various ways that these security tokens work and how you need to have at least two, maybe three, if you want to make sure you can get back into your device or your account uh, if you were to lose your device or if you were to need to add something later. So we're going to teach you guys how to do that. Stay tuned. We'll get into it and teach you how these universal two-factor security keys work with Google's new advanced protection program.